recorded recursive review that every single person in my classroom better be watching on Wednesday and have it for Thursday when we go to class? Yeah, perfect. Let's go ahead and get started with number one. It says Sean surveyed each of his friends to find out how much time they spent eating with their family. Each dot on the chart represents three students. Um, then the question that you guys are going to write down is how many students ate dinner in less than 30 minutes? So I'm going to go ahead and have you pause. Go ahead and write down how many students ate dinner in less than 30 minutes. Whenever you're done doing that, you can go ahead and press play, okay? Or unpause. All right. Thank you for pressing play. <laughs> so again, we wrote down how many students ate dinner in less than 30 minutes. So I want you to go ahead and box less than and we're going to circle 30 minutes okay so we also need to come up before we do that and we probably need to pull out from there that each dot on the chart represents three students that is a key they didn't give it to us the way it normally looks but they did tell us that each dot on the chart represents three students so that matters it's important so i'm going to come down here and i'm going to put just a dot and i'm going to write equals three students and I put SDS to represent or uh, write students for short. All right, so then I'm looking at my actual um, dot plot and I'm gonna determine, am I going to have to pull out this dot plot and write it on my paper? The answer is no. I'm only looking at the data that they gave me. I'm not manipulating the data in any way. I'm not adding to it. I'm not taking it away. I'm just interpreting it. So I just need to look at the, ch the chart read it and then figure out what I'm going from there. So I'm not going to copy the dot plot down today, all right? But I do notice on my dot plot that we have something going on over here. What are those? Fractions, right. So I wanna know how many students ate dinner in less than 30 minutes. So that means if we are looking here, my denominator's a six. So I know that in one hour, or the 30 minutes is half of an hour, right? Yes, okay. So which one of these fractions would represent 30 minutes or half of an hour? It's gonna be three over six, cause that's half, right? One half. Yes, one half. So I know that three over six is equivalent to one half. I would just have to divide by three, right? And it would be that. Miss Starling got a little wordy and I'm gonna have Miss Parr just clarify what I was saying cause I was saying too many words. She, she's going to simplify the words I just said. So, zero minutes, one hour is 60 minutes. In the middle, 30 minutes. That's half of an hour, 30 minutes. So, zero, 60, and then this is 30. And then I did the simplifying over here just to prove to you. Pretty sure that made sense. Yes. Okay. So, anywho, we now know that we are looking for less than, for how many students say dinner, less than 30 minutes. That means I'm not going to include this one because that one is exactly 30 minutes. Now, if they had asked me how many students ate dinner in 30 minutes or less, I would include this, but it doesn't say in 30 minutes or less. It says how many students ate dinner in less than 30 minutes. Therefore, the only ones that I'm going to look at are going to be these guys over here. Now, we're gonna have to really quickly count up, see how many are in, how does zero? How does three people eat? <laughs> they, didn't eat. <laughs> they didn't eat. Okay, so we have one, two, three, and I like to write them on top, one, two, three, and then I go back and add them. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right, well I know three and three together is? Six. And I know that six plus six is? 12. And then my answer is not 12, because you have to remember that one dot is equal to three students. So I need to take this 12 and I'm going to multiply it by three. Three. Good. Three times two is six. Six and three times one is three. And 12 times three is a math fact. <laughs> yeah. It just says three to six. All right. So how many students ate dinner in less than 30 minutes? 36 students. Two. The perimeter of the shaded face of the cube is 24 centimeters. What is the volume of the cube in cubic centimeters? Go ahead and write your question. What is the volume of the cube in cubic centimeters? Pause the video and then press play once you've written it. Or you could press unpause. So. Okay, so you've written down the question. The question says, what is the volume? This is what we're solving for. 
of the cube in cubic centimeters. So there's a lot of information they gave us, gave us in this problem. The first thing they told us is that we have a cube, which means that all of the faces are made up of congruent sides because they're squares. <laughs> okay. So the air, the perimeter distance around the shaded face is 24 centimeters. So if I look at my formula chart, my star chart, my formula for perimeter of a square is P for perimeter equals 4S. And remember, anytime I have a number and a variable and nothing in between, I always do what operation? Multiplication. Multiplication. I don't even think they can see me. I don't know if they can see oh, yeah. So the perimeter, 24, is equal to 4 times the side. So then we know that the answer is going to be 6, right? Because 4 times 6 equals 24. 24. So one side is 6, which means every single side is 6. Because it's a cube and it's congruent sides, right? So now I can finally solve for volume. My formula for volume is volume equals length times width times height. My length is 6. My volume, my width, width is six and my height is six. So six times six is 36. 36 times six, I don't know my 36s. So six times six is 36. Six times three is 18. Plus three is 21. So my volume is 216 cubic centimeters or centimeters cubed. Yay! Woo! Okay, Cheyenne works 15 hours a week at the movie theater. She earns $8 an hour. Which statement is true of, uh, which statement about her weekly income is true? So let's go ahead and write our question. We're going to say three. Which statement is true? Go ahead. And All right, thank you for writing that down. We're going to go ahead and if you have a highlighter, you're going to highlight the word true. If you don't have a highlighter, go ahead and box it. So which statement is true? Then I'm going to come over here, and again, we are looking at, based on my answer choices, it's talking about net income and gross income. I'm going to write notes down here to remind myself what the difference is between net income and gross income because we don't have any notes in our journal yet. You're going to write these notes with me too, right? So let's write, let's start with gross income. And gross income is the amount of uh, money I make before deductions. So I'm not gonna write all of that, I'm just gonna write before deductions, okay? So we're gonna write before deductions. And net income, if gross income is gonna be before deductions, then net income is going to be? After deductions. That's right, after deductions. So we're just gonna write after deductions and this one is the amount of money that you actually get to see this is the amount of money that comes home what makes it to your bank account um so this is what's after deductions all right uh so let's go ahead and see so cheyenne is working 15 dollars a week at the movie theater she earns eight dollars an hour let's go ahead and figure out what her gross income is so that we can determine whether or not which of these statements is true I'm going to come up here and I'm going to do 15 because she works 15 hours and then I'm going to multiply it by 8 because she worked 8 or she got paid $8 an hour. 8 times 5 is 40, carry the 4, drop the 0, 8 times 1 is 8, plus 4 is 12. So all in all, her gross income, so what she makes before taxes, is going to be $120. Let's go ahead and label that. Gross income and my class i always tell them that it's gross and i'm always like ew that's so gross because i never actually see that amount of money um and then we think of net income because i'm sure miss parr has talked with you guys about the basketball net or the fishing net and we know that after the net catches all the money that whatever comes out is the net income right so that's why it's after deductions okay so we know based on what they told us and our knowledge of gross and net income that Cheyenne's gross income is going to be $120. Let's determine and take that, uh, let's take all that information and figure out how we can eliminate some answer choices. All right, so it says her net income is more than $120. So let's look at those words here. Is there any way that her net income could be more 
than $120 if her gross income was $120? No. No. Because gross income was before they took any uh, taxes and all those other deductions and stuff out. So there's no way that her net income could be more than her gross income. That can never happen. All right, let's look at B. B says that her gross income is less than $120. Well, we just said that her gross income was $120, right? So it's not less than that. It is $120. Her net income is less than $120. Could that be true? Yes. It sure could. Let's go ahead and put a question mark here. Because we know if her gross income was $120, they're going to have to take some kind of deductions out for taxes, which means her net income has to be lower than her gross income, right? Mm -hmm. And then the last one that we got to just double check to make sure that's not my answer choice says that her gross income is more than $120. Is that true? No. No, her gross income was $120. Therefore, the best answer choice and the only answer choice that works for that one is going to be C. Thanks. Okay, number four, it says, look at the model below. The model shows that the product of three-tenths and two-tenths is, I don't know. So, we're going to take this statement and turn it into a question. So, go ahead and write the product of three-tenths and two-tenths is blank. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to look at our model right here. This entire thing represents one whole, okay? So remember, anything that is inside is going to be less than a whole because the entire thing is one whole. So when we look at the vertical rods, rods or the horizontal rods, we know that those equal one-tenth, okay? Because ten of them equal one whole. When I'm looking at the individual little units, they represent one hundredth, okay? So our model says 3 tenths times 2 tenths. So here's my 3 tenths. 1 tenth, 2 tenths, 3 tenths. I know those are shaky, but they look perfect. you get the idea. She so agree. then I'm multiplying 2 tenths horizontally. So my answer is going to be the overlap of this model, this crisscross model. Okay? So 3 tenths times 2 tenths equals 6 tenths. So if I were to write it like this, 3 times 2 equals 6, and then I have 1, 2 digits behind the decimal, so I would have 1, 2, I would have to fill in a 0 right here. So I have 6 hundredths. Yay, Miss Parr. Thank you. Mr. Aguilar drove his track 151.2 mile, 151 miles during 24 days. He drove the same number of miles each day. How many miles did Mr. Aguilar drive each day? So we're going to go ahead and pause in a second and write down the question, how many miles did Mr. Aguilar drive each day? Thank you. Okay, so thank you for writing your question down. We're going to go ahead and let's box or highlight where it says each day. We are dealing with decimals right now. So that's kind of a weird mind frame for you guys because we've been dealing with word problems a lot. We've been dealing with fraction word problems. So I want you to kind of like pump the brakes, pause, reframe, and process through that we're dealing with decimals right now, okay? So how many miles did Mr. Aguilar drive each day? What do those keywords tell me each day that kind of help me when I'm dealing with decimals? <laughs> what should that help me know that I'm going to be doing division, right? Yeah, thank you. Good job, conversation with myself. So I'm going to be dividing decimals. So let's write that down. Well, when I divide decimals, that's exactly like dividing regular numbers, right? Except for I need to go ahead and uh, shoot my decimal straight up to the top. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm going to write it over here. So we know that inside the house is going to be how many miles he drove. And it says he drove his truck for... 151.2 miles right there. So I'm going to put 151.2 and bring my decimal straight up, right? Then I know that he drove for how many days? 24. 24. So that's going to be on the outside of my house. We're going to pause the screen so that you can go ahead and one, let's go ahead and write our does McDonald's sell cheeseburger steps down because you definitely need to have that. So does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers? And then whenever I am doing division, 
when I have a divisor that is not a multiple of math fact that I can memorize, what do I need to do with those divisors? I need to come out and do the multiples on the side with my repeated addition. Please do that now. I'm going to pause the screen, but everybody is adding 24 nine times repeatedly in the boxes off to the side, okay? Thank you. You need this for your Friday quiz. Oh, yes, that's right. I forgot to say that. So, please write this down right now. You need this on another day this week where you have a divisor of 24 and you need the divisor of 24 on your quiz. So if you already have it right now, you could probably just come back to this day on Friday, right? And then just use those multiples. That's so smart. Big brain. All right, so we have our multiples for 24 over here. Go ahead, slowly pause the screen, look, glance at the reason. I'm not gonna read them to you. And we're gonna go ahead and start doing our division, okay? So I'm going to start off with orange. How many times does 24 go into one? Zero. zero. Does it go into 15 at all? No. No, got to put another zero. Got to go all the way across and look at 151. How many times does 24 go into 151? Six times, right? I'm going to put in six there. Then I did my division. Multiply what is 24 times six? It is 144. I'm going to do my subtraction. I need to regroup. 11 minus 4 is 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. 4 minus 4 is 0. Zero minus, I mean, 1 minus 1 is 0. Then I'm checking. Is 7 smaller than 24? Yep. Good. And then I can go ahead and bring down my next number, which is a 2. Ooh, I like that. That already tells me that I'm going to be done soon, right? Mm -hmm. All right. How many times does 24 go into 72? three then i need to multiply what is 24 times three it is 72 72 then i'm going to subtract 72 minus 72 is zero then i'm going to check is zero smaller than 24 yes it is good and then is there anything else for me to bring down nope nope so i'm good to go i know that mr aguilar drove six and three tenth miles each day. Right? Yep. Yay, good job. Almost done. Groovy chain. Yeah. Last week, Lindsay jogged five miles. This week, she jogged one and one third miles on Monday and five sixth miles on Tuesday. How many more miles did Lindsay jog last week than this week? So go ahead and pause the video, write down your question. How many more miles did Lindsay jog last week than this week? Okay, so how many more miles did she jog last week? So in my problem, I have how many more, which tells me I'm going to do what operation? Subtraction. Subtraction, good. All right, let's pull some information out of this problem. So it says last week, Lindsay jogged five miles. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna write last week, five miles, okay? Then it tells me that this week, she jogged one and one third miles on Monday. So Monday, one and one third miles, and Tuesday, five, six miles. So I want to know how much more she jogged last week. So what do you think I'm going to have to do with Monday and Tuesday before I can solve this problem? Add them together. Add them together. So I'm going to add one and one third plus five sixths. So one and one third plus five, six. If you want to put a zero here to kind of hold your place, you can do that. I'm going to go ahead and put my zero there. All right, first thing I'm going to do, look at my denominators. Are my denominators the same? No. No, they are not. So I need to find my least common multiple, my least common denominator. Hopefully you don't need the chart by now because we've done it so many times, you know. If I do it, I have three, then Stop. six. Stop. All right, so my least common denominator is going to be 6. So I need to make my equivalent fractions equal to 6. So what do I do? 3 to 6, 3 times what? 2. Whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do to the numerator. So 1 times 2 is 2. two. So I have 1 and 2 6. And then I don't have to change this one. It already has 6 on the bottom. So 0 and Five six. So when I add these together, two six plus five six equals seven six. Seven six. But that is what kind of fraction? Improper. So I need to change my improper fraction to a mixed number. 
It's like we've done this before. All right, how many times can six go into seven? One. One times six? Six. Subtract and I'm left one. with one. So my one on top is my big one in the front. Numerator, denominator stays the same. So seven six is the same as one and one six. So now I can add them together. One plus one equals two. So she ran two and one six miles this week. Not okay? done yet. But would this probably be an answer choice? For sure. So this is this week. Okay, so now I need to take that away from the five miles. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear myself some space. And you guys are not gonna erase this. You guys are just gonna find another clear space to write this down, okay? Yeah, please don't erase that. Yeah, like don't, don't erase it. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm imagining it. All right, so five minus two and one six. So I have nothing here, so just like in the last part where I put a zero in the front, I can put zero six right here because I'm working with six, six. Okay, so subtract. I'm gonna start with my fraction, zero six minus one six. Can't do that. <laughs> so I go next door, the five becomes a four. four, and I just took one whole. In this problem, the value of one whole is six, six, because I look at the denominator, so the zero is gonna become a six. Six sixths minus one sixth is five sixths. Four minus two is two. In my class, she didn't make you rewrite the problem, so tell her thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, so she ran two and five sixths more last week. She got a little lazy this week. She runs like me, I wouldn't have even run. because I didn't get up off the couch. <laughs> get up off the couch. Sorry, Even though you told me it was sufficient. Reading rainbow. She makes me say them out loud. Oh, an earthquake. Last week. It was a face button. That was last week. I was like, why'd you pause? We'll never know. How many more did you jog?